Welcome to the home family gathering where everybody's got a seat at the table in the Father's house. We've been studying the past few weeks the Apostolic School of the Prophetic, and we'll continue there uh, this week. There may be some people jumping on the call. So uh, just uh, if you hear a ding or a doorbell ring, that's, uh, we let, we're letting them in. But this uh, call is being recorded, and I thank you for being here. I've been enjoying this, and uh, I hope everybody else has as well. I'm going to start right here today. Being prophetic is not being ominous, scary, or theatrical. Most of the ecclesia has not been exposed to the true apostolic, and those who have are leery and intimidated when someone shows up claiming to be a prophet, prophetess, or oracle. Can one be, can one be a prophetic person without prophesying? The short answer is yes. I've personally encountered people in both the ecclesia and marketplace that could be considered prophetic in the way they think and process data. Some of them were mildly eccentric and somewhat e eclectic, but they were extremely talented individuals. I know a few creative designers, listen to this, I know a few creative designers, talented authors, and gifted songwriters who fit this profile. Is it not prophetic when storytellers and narrators cause us to feel like we are a part of, the, of a story or book? There's a difference between a musician and a singer, but they work together to make music. Singer-songwriters have a way of sharing their heart and soul with us through songs. Minstrels and psalmists uh, tap into the realm of the spirit and sing the song of the sovereign. How about prophetic dancing and artistic expression? See law. So I think that adequately answers the question, can one be a prophetic person without prophesying? Because prophesying usually involves saying something, seeing something and saying something. Well, what about prophetic dancing and artistic expression, which uh, some of the modern day ecclesia has tapped into, especially um, those among the charismatic and uh, those among the apostolic church ministries that we've been associated with, some of them have, have, have tapped into both prophetic dancing and artistic expression during uh, their services. But this is what the scripture says. Do not be drunk with wine, for that is reckless living, but be filled with the spirit. Speak to one another in what? Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Give thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's found in Ephesians 5, verses 18 through, the, through 19, and that was the modern English translation. Is there a difference between the spirit of prophecy and the gift of prophesying? That's a good question. The spirit of prophecy and the gift of prophesying are a part of the, of the prophetic, but there are some differences when it comes to function and operation. Case in point, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Yahshua. So when you're sharing your testimony, you're actually operating in the spirit of prophecy, and sometimes it can be so anointed that it will penetrate through the darkness to touch someone's heart, and there's other times when uh, your testimony is so powerful, people will be healed while listening to your testimony, especially if you're sharing uh, the reality that you have been both healed and delivered. I've seen it happen. I know you have. In other words, when we testify to what Yahweh has done and is doing in our lives, we are prophesying. We are prophesying. When we bear witness to what Holy Spirit is saying, we are prophesying. Someone does not have to necessarily be gifted in grace to prophesy, but those, listen, someone does not have to necessarily be gifted and grace to prophesy, but those who are gifted in grace to function and operate in the gift of prophesying will be proficient in what? Exhortation, encouragement, 
and edification. I think that it would be safe to say that the spirit of prophecy is not limited in function to our gathering together unto him, and the gift of prophesying is a manifestation of Holy Spirit that has been given to the ecclesia for our common good. That's a big statement. I hope you'll come back and read it and listen to this teaching again. Here's prophetic order for us. Even the, 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 new, the newer covenant, the newer testament laid it out for us. Let two or three prophets speak and let others pass judgment. Now, what we, we see in this day and hour, both on Facebook, Twitter, and social networks, is there's a lot of things being said in his behalf. Uh, giving him the credit as coming from God, and there's very little passing judgment. Like when someone prophesies, prognosticates, or um, tries to say something specific based on a day and time, and it doesn't come to pass, nobody's saying anything about it. They just give them a pass. Well, in the assembly and in the gathering, it was okay for two or three prophets to speak. How many how many assemblies or gatherings have you been to lately where uh, two or three prophets spoke anywhere? Before, after, or during the service. It just doesn't happen in most liturgies, in most organized religions. Let two or three prophets speak and let others pass judgment. But if a revelation is made to another who is seated, the first one must keep silent. That doesn't mean that we have to, uh, if, two, if two prophetic people stand up at the same time or say they have something that they believe they've heard from the Lord or seen, that uh, the first one who stood up, it's not like coming to a stop sign and the person on your right gets to go first and you sit there until the person on your right goes first. That's not how it works. But if you're, if you're in the middle of prophesying, and uh, you're and you're still uh, standing there waiting uh, to receive further instruction or further uh, information, and someone else receives something, it might be good for you to be quiet and let them bring it at that time. Because you know what, prophecies can spin off of one another, and P and prophets can work together because they're tapping into the same stream of the spirit in the same situation, environment, or gathering. So it's okay for more than one person to prophesy. And, uh, and if, you know, if a revelation is made to another who has been standing by, it'd be all right for the first one to keep silent until that message is delivered. It's okay. But don't look at it as being some kind of a, a traffic signal uh, or like, uh, well, uh, they beat me to the stop sign on the right, so I've got to let them go. That's really that's the best way I know how to put it. Or in Texas, if somebody comes up behind you, you used to move over to the shoulder of the road and let them go by. That's not a written law. That was just a courtesy. In other words, uh, when you're, you're, you're playing on a golf course and someone's playing faster than you, it's a common courtesy to let them play through, but you don't have to. Okay? You don't have to. It's just an unwritten rule of etiquette on the golf course that if somebody's really playing too fast and you might, you're taking your time to, to get to the green, uh, it's okay to let them play through. For you can all prophesy one by one so that, that all may learn and all may be exhorted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. What, I, <laughs> what I'd like to say about this is, Everything that you're seeing and hearing needs to be monitored by your own spirit because it might not necessarily fit the situation, the gathering, the assembly, the event, whatever. It might not fit there, and it might be something that needs to be incubated and developed. And if it is a true word of prophecy, whenever you get the go to release it, it will be time for it to be released. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Okay? 
If anyone thinks he's a prophet or spiritual, let him recognize <clears throat> that the things which I write to you are Yahweh's or Yahshua's commandment. It's not a suggestion. It is his commandment. But if anyone, in other words, what did he say now? <laughs> this is the apostle speaking. This is a divine order speaking here. Divine government showing up. If anyone thinks that he's a prophet or spiritual, let him recognize that the things which I'm writing to you are Yahshua's commandment to you. But if anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 29 through 33 and 37 through 38 in the New American Standard Bible. Now, I want to go back up here because, because I believe there's a better understanding of this passage of Scripture right here. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. So anything that's going on around you when we come together, when we gather, when we assemble, wherever it is, for whatever reason, anything that's going on around you that's causing confusion is not of God. Anything that's not a, that's not a part of the flow of what's going on is attempting to cause confusion and maybe create chaos and is not a part of the, uh, let's say, the flow. It's certainly not according, it's not, it's not of God. And uh, and he is certainly not is certainly not going to result in peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Well, I'd like to say it this way: that applies this this particular passage of scripture applies to the ecclesia in every locale and region around the world, because there's only one ecclesia and kingdom, and there's only one body of Messiah, and there's only one community of believers, and we're all a part of that community. Listen to this. The gift of prophesying is one of nine gifts and manifestations of Holy Spirit, and mostly for exhortation, encouragement, and edification. I said the gift of prophesying <coughs> is one of nine gifts and manifestations of Holy Spirit, and mostly for encouragement, exhortation, encouragement, and edification. I said mostly. OK. There are differences in administrations, but the same Lord. There are various operations, but it is the same God who operates all of them in all people. Now, listen to this. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to everyone for the common good. To one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom, which speaks to things that are to come. Another, the word of knowledge that speaks, speaks to things that are by the same spirit to another faith. This is not just talking about general faith or belief. This is talking about the gift and manifestation of the spirit that gives, that causes faith to rise in a person's heart. And when operating in the spirit uh, or the gift of faith, I want you to know faith permeates the atmosphere. Another to faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing, gifts of healings by the same spirit, which indicates that there's more than one manifestation of healing and there's more than one gift that operates when healing. Okay. To another, the working of miracles. And I'm not talking about just uh, a divine intervention that happens to happen according to his will. I'm talking about when the gift of the working of miracles is taking place, miracles will take place when the gift of miracles is an operation. Now, of all that I've mentioned so far, if I was to say spirit-filled charismatic, if I was to say non-denominational non independent, if I was to say apostolic prophetic, which of these gifts and manifestations are not that prevalent in our gatherings and in our in our assemblies which ones are not that prevalent we'd have to say the gift of faith and the gift of miracles those are the power gifts and what is it what is it about the power gifts that we are missing we don't have a problem with the 
<laughs> the gifts of utterance. We don't have the problem. We don't have a problem with the gifts that see something, but we have a problem with the power gifts. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but that one and very same spirit works all of these dividing to each one individually as he will. That's 1 Corinthians 12, verses 5 through 11. The reason that there are nine manifestations of Holy Spirit, some people call them gifts of the Spirit. The reason that there are nine, not one, is because he wants, uh, he wants the body of Messiah to benefit from the common good of coming together. And, it's, and these gifts and manifestations of Holy Spirit have the ability to meet our needs and meet us at the point of our need and to answer some questions that we have deep inside. In other words, if the Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone for their common good, then we need all of the gifts and manifestations. We don't need just some. Do, can y'all agree with me there? We don't need, uh, we don't need a, a, to come together so that we can prophesy to one another. We don't need to come together just so uh, we can discern spirits. And this is not necessarily discerning whether or not there are evil spirits present, but discerning the spirits of men as well. Spirits which involve motive and intent, spirits that involve uh, selfish ambition and hidden agenda, spirits, the spirits of men that are sometimes in league with demons, but also just the spirits of men, discerning them. Oh, Brother Blake, now you're really, you're, mess, you're messing with us, you're meddling. And uh, I just don't, I just don't know. I just don't know if we'll ever, there'll ever come a time when we'll see all nine manifestations and gifts of Holy Spirit working and operating in our midst. Well, there will come a time whenever we start seeing ourselves as being a part of the ecclesia and kingdom in earth as, a, as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, when we see ourselves as one, when we see ourselves as a part of the body of Messiah rather than a fragmented, divided bunch of people who call themselves Christians. Well, amen, Brother Blake, that's good preaching. Now go ahead. Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love and make it your aim, your great quest. Woo, that love we sang about. How can I respond to the love you've lavished on me and earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowments or gifts, especially that you may prophesy, interpret the divine will and purpose in inspired preaching and teaching. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every time we gathered together, and assemble, whether it be virtually, whether it be streaming, whether it be in person, face to face, across the table, from one another or a large group. Wouldn't it be wonderful to hear prophecy interpreting the divine will and purpose of, through an inspi inspired preaching and teaching of what some people call anointed? I once said that if I never preach another powerless message, it won't be too soon. I've, 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 also been, I've also been told that we can tell when, when uh, Yahshua is speaking by his spirit out of you. And I can also tell you when he's not. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but to God. But listen, for no one understands or catches his meaning. Because in Holy Spirit, he utters secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. This, now, <laughs> some people have taken this passage of Scripture and made speaking in tongues a, let's just say, taboo. 
some people have taken this passage of scripture instead of reading it the way it really is supposed to read, and they play and they put their understanding on it, and they put their twist on it, and what makes their soul comfortable with it, and they've gotten in their flesh, and they've blasphemed Holy Spirit, or come very close to it because they have said that speaking in tongues is of the devil. They've said that you may speak in tongues, but I may not. But the truth is that when we speak in tongues, we're speaking to our Father. It's a direct red phone hot line of communication from spirit to spirit that nobody in their flesh and soul is going to understand because by the spirit, we're uttering secret truths and hidden things that are not obvious to the understanding of man. <clears throat> but what about this? What about while we're speaking in tongues, all of a sudden, those secret truths and hidden things become obvious to our understanding and we deliver that message through inspired preaching and teaching. What if, what if while we're speaking in tongues, someone else hears the word of the spirit for their life that let's say to that point didn't believe? What if? But on the other hand, that the one who prophesies, who interprets the divine will and purpose and inspired preaching and teaching speaks to men for their upbuilding and constructive spiritual progress and encouragement and consolation. That's found in 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 3 in the Amplified Classic Bible. Now, <clears throat> let me say this. There's a whole lot of so-called anointed, of so-called inspired preaching and teaching going on that a lot of people don't understand. There's a lot of people that are speaking out of another realm in English that people don't understand. Does that mean that we are speaking something that is confusing? No, that is a lie. It's not only a lie, it's an accusation that's being brought forth out of the soul and flesh of man that's probably in league with the demon spirit that's trying to bring confusion. When somebody says, well, you just confuse me sometimes. I don't understand you sometimes. That's no indication that what I'm saying is not true. And it's no indication that I need to break it down in bite-sized form or heat it up like heating up milk or pablum to, to feed you by the spoon. There's no indication that I'm supposed to. It's a, You're supposed to be hearing it by the spirit. You're supposed to be hearing it in the way that it's being brought forth through inspired preaching and teaching. You're supposed to be hearing it, even if it sounds like another language, you're supposed to be hearing it, not with your religious ear and understanding. You're supposed to be hearing the truth as a son. Let the son in you respond to the truth you're hearing. Don't let the flesh and the soul have command of your spirit when you're hearing something that you're not quite getting. It's okay to not quite get it then that's when you start asking questions of Holy Spirit. I heard this, but I didn't quite understand it. This is how it hit me. It's the way it made me feel. Let me tell you that is both soulish and carnal. Because I'm going to be honest with you, as honest as I know how. Are you ready? Most of the time, people's first reaction to truth is that of anger. Most of the time, most of the time, in most situations, people's first reaction to truth is that of claiming that they don't understand. This is how it makes me feel, so therefore it can't be from God. That is a bunch of hooey. May I say that again? That's a bunch of hooey. Say hooey. Is there a difference between the gift of prophesying and the office of a prophet? And the answer to that, I'm going to answer the next time we come together. That's all I'm going to share with you today. But let me let me go ahead and say this. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we would go ahead 
and develop our hearts to be able to hear the word of the spirit whenever it's coming forth, even if it's corrected. Even if it's a mild rebuke, instead of saying, I just don't like how that makes me feel. I don't really want, I don't really want to understand that. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the Son in us would submit to authority, the authority of Yahweh's word to the place that we were never offended again? And that, my friend, is what's going to happen whenever we grow up into him together. We will not be so easily offended. Because love is not offended. 